Well, Mickey Mouse says it's six o'clock, so we'll get started. I'd like to welcome you to the May 11th, 2017 regular meeting of the Guyman City Council. This time I'd like to invite Police Chief Michael Babb to come up front and lead the invocation, if you'll rise. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we, we thank you for this day, Lord, and we thank you for the rain that you have brought to us. Lord, we just we ask a blessing on this meeting, Lord, and we thank you for these men that, that have came to serve and make decisions for the betterment of our city, Lord. Lord, we just ask that you watch over and guide us, and these things we ask in your name. Amen. 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 Sheriff Bowley, would you lead us in the pledge? States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, gentlemen. I'll call this meeting to order. Agenda item number two is attendance roll call. Peterson? Here. Swager? Here. Crone? Uh, here. Alvedras? Here. Living Good? Here. Hawkins? Mr. Petty? Here. Mr. Mitchell? Here. Agenda item number three is approval of the consent agenda. Uh, I've got a question concerning uh, the hotel motel tax on the power, uh, power play marketing ad to USA Today for $2,750. Is there anybody here that can answer that? I'd like to make a motion that we pull uh, those two items, power play marketing for $2,750 and brass Ad adventure annual app fee for $3,000 until we can find out what they're for. Okay, have a motion? Second. Have a motion and a second. Crone? Aye. Living Good? Aye. Swager? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We have five ayes. I'll make a motion that we approve the rest of the consent agenda. I'll have a motion and a second. Alvedras? Aye. Living Good? Aye. Swager? Aye. Crone? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We have five ayes. Uh, agenda item number four, public comments and announcements. Brian? Tuesday. Well, welcome to Guyman. You have your motorcycle? <laughs> you got it? No, I'm not going to They're going to need it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Agenda item number five is a presentation of the 2016 Citizen of the Year Award to Jim Quimby. Well, the reason we're doing this here tonight at the chamber banquet on somebody's, somebody dropped the ball and we didn't get the plaque made. So I gave Jim a piece of cardboard that night instead of the plaque. So, so we got a, we finally got we got a we got a plaque made, and so we thought we'd get him out in public again so we could take pictures of him and present it. But it, a little background: the uh, Judge F. Heiner Dale established the uh, Citizen of the Year Award some time back. He was a very philanthropic man. He was a judge, a lawyer. The, the patriarch of the Dale family. So each year the chamber recognizes a dedicated and serve, d distinguished citizen that does a lot of good for the city of Guyman to be the uh, citizen of the year and the council we vote on those nominations. So Mr. Quimby if you'll come up we'll give this to you. You know, when they gave me this award, I was uh, not lost for words very many times, but this was definitely one of them. And, uh, 
proud to be part of this community and all the friends and acquaintances I have. And, and it's, it's been a lot of fun, a lot of work, and I really appreciate the award. It, I was, it was a total shock, but thank you so much. Thank well, you. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. you. We're going to move agenda item number 16 to the top, right to the next agenda item, so that, uh, as, as the chief put it, everybody can go back to work. <laughs> So, why don't, Chief, why don't you have everybody come up front, all of our law, law enforcement folks that are here tonight. Uh, it's a very special week. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll blend it. Well, <laughs> what are you? Are you what? Are you? Is that a hint? Or something? <laughs> All right. Proclamation. Whereas the Congress and President of the United States have designated May 15th as Peace Officers Memorial Day, and the week in which May 15th falls is National Police Week, and whereas the members of the law enforcement agencies of Guyman, Texas County, and the State of Oklahoma play an essential role in safeguarding the rights and freedoms of Guyman, and whereas it is important that all citizens know and understand the duties, responsibilities, hazards, and sacrifices of their law enforcement agent, and that the members of our law enforcement agencies recognize their duty to serve the people by safeguarding life and property and by protecting them against violence and disorder and by protecting the innocent against deception and the weak against oppression. And whereas the men and women of, law, of the law enforcement agencies of Guyman, Texas County, and the state of Oklahoma unceasingly provide a vital public service, I, Kim Peterson, Mayor of Guyman, Oklahoma, and the City Council, call upon all citizens of Guyman to observe May 15, 2016, as Peace Officers Memorial Day in honor of those law enforcement officers who through their courageous deeds have made the ultimate sacrifice in service to their community or have become disabled in the performance of duty and let us recognize and pay respect to the survivors of our fallen heroes. Now therefore I, Kim Peterson, Mayor of Guyman, Oklahoma and the City Council do hereby proclaim the week of May 14th through 20th, 2017 to be National Police Week in Guyman, Oklahoma. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you all very much. <laughs> okay, agenda item number seven is presentation of monthly activities and financial report by artist incubation. Ms. Strong. Good evening, Council. I think, let's see, do we start at number four? Do you guys have this? It says monthly report for January. I don't know why it says January. 
Should be April. I'm reporting to you about April. Yeah. I'm going to talk about the events that we have had this last month in April. We had a Cajun Boil fundraiser. Did any of you make it? Sergio, I think you almost made I almost it. something <laughs> in. We miss you all. You're always invited to every event that we have. We did raise some funds. It was t going towards our lights. We need lights in, in the building over there. And um, we didn't, we may have raised enough to get the lighting project done. So we had a good time that night. We had a lot of people come in from around the panhandle. We're still working on the development of our website store, uh, choosing artists that want to be involved with that. We have now started selling art supplies. If you have students who are in an art class somewhere, they can come in and get their supply, supplies from us. Um, did any of you have kids or grandkids in the art camps this spring? Some of, didn't, did you have any? No. Kids, no, nobody had kids in the art camps. We had a great showing for the three art camps that we had. We had one adult class. Sherry Quimby, I think, participated in that, that just left. And then the last thing to talk to, tell you about is our potential licensed kitchen we're working on. What do you see here? This is maybe a brand we're working on, Made in Gaiman. That's maybe a logo for... Do you like that? That's I like nice. it. If, if this song... Um, if we get this project done, so then the Made in Gaiman would be if you run your your products through our licensed kitchen and we have cases there to sell made in Gaiman products maybe like when we had the harvest festival last year maybe they'd be able to sell their jellies we are told if they had it run them through a licensed kitchen it's not a commercial kitchen it's a licensed kitchen maybe if Chet Crone wants to get his sweet rolls and things that he likes to get at the farmers market or somewhere and they were to run them through our kitchen maybe then it would be okay and pass inspection this is all draft mode, gentlemen. This is just what I've been told by the state health department. Anyway, we're working on that. But what if we sell those products on an everyday basis? We've got Josh Hogue over there grows some vegetables, and last year he had a whole lot of cucumbers and took up a new craft of making his own pickles. What if he could sell them over there? Now we have products that we're also putting sales tax on so to get people in, and if they walk past some of those things to and see some art that they love we think it's a win-win so that's what's in the works for this year we've got a potential donor for a commercial refrigerator we're on our way with this thing we're looking for funding for this I think we can make it happen this year I hope it makes you proud I hope it works out but that's what we're up to at all fired up and that's what gets us all fired up is these kinds of projects okay, okay. what do I do now <laughs> I'm done. Thank you for your support. <laughs> Any questions? Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Agenda item number eight is presentation of monthly activities and financial report by Main Street Gaiman. Ms. Hey. Johnson. We had uh, probably the main thing that happened in April was our community cleanup. The city was also involved in that. And the Main Street helpers came out from 10 to 2 no from 10 to noon and then we had worked together and seaboard provided burgers tcec and ptci we served over 85 people i believe so and that's counting your city folk but that's i don't know what's 85 times 2 help me 170 Sounds good. That's that's at least 170 hours put in. And then we had another crew of at least 15 that came in and worked in the afternoon. So so that was that was excellent. It was a beautiful day for it. A lot of people that were happy and helping. Lots of people. Our On the Bricks TV show, we did it at TCEC because we had some people asking about their big windmill and what that was and all that and so they explained it in their solar panels that is the uh, it's the it's taped in April but then it, it plays in May cash mob we had a dozen mobsters go to Helms nurse nursery we had 20 mobsters with the restaurant mob the lunch mob 
They went to Taco Shop in La Victoria. I don't know it's, if it's really pertinent, but uh, attended the OPSU Hall of Fame Alumni Banquet. Uh, it was great. And then we are required to send somebody to the National Main Street Conference each year to keep our accreditation. And that was in Pittsburgh, so a week, a week during April was, was that. I didn't get, because I left for Pittsburgh, I didn't get to fill up my volunteer hours and stuff. I think you'll live. Have to tell you that your Guyman Fire Department did a wonderful job in working with PCHC. Main Street helps as a partner on the Autism Awareness Program, and so kudos, kudos to Dean and his guys. Then we do have Outback tomorrow evening. That starts, we start serving about 5.30, and it's burgers, beans, beverages, and band. And it, 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 it's the Main Street part of the partnership with Iron Thunder for the motorcycle run. So I haven't heard the count yet, but um, I'm sure there'll be over a thousand bikes here again. And it, it's awesome. We still have a couple of openings for 6.30 in the morning. <laughs> Volunteers needed if, if you just can't help yourself, Chip. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll do fine. Do you guys have any questions? Nay. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Agenda item number nine is update by Fire Chief Dean McFadden on the Swift Water class and equipment from Homeland Security. <coughs> I've talked about this a couple of times already. Uh, Homeland Security gave us some money for equipment. Again, if you'd asked me two years ago if we needed it, I'd have told you probably not. But after we had the flooding up around four corners and we didn't know what we were doing or have the equipment to do it. so. Uh, they gave us the equipment. Uh, they also sent us to training for a week, and I'll let these guys kind of talk about it a little bit, but it was probably, well, it was the hardest fire training I've ever done. We came back beat up, battered. David had some bruises all over him, and um, it was good stuff. This is some of the gear that they bought for us, and I don't know, can everybody see the little PowerPoint? It's nothing, if you'll scroll through one more. So Oklahoma, Oklahoma Homeland Security had money given to us by the federal government after 9-11. They split us, split us up into eight different regions. Uh, so region one is fairly large and there's only two technical rescue teams in the area and we're one of them. Um, so we can get called anywhere in that area and really anywhere in the state. So uh, now we're a certified swift water team. If they have major flooding, we can go assist. If, if everything works out, then we could. And you can scroll through. Uh, we're truly an all hazards department, so we, we take care of everything. If, if, the, if the public calls, then we have to be able to take care of them. I know two or three years ago, we had a guy fall through the ice, kind of the same question, what would we have done? Uh, we didn't have the gear, we didn't have the equipment, we didn't have the training. Uh, now we have all of those, so if it happens, we would be ready, um, and so we would make it happen. So um, anytime we, and Homeland Security, when they gave us all this equipment, they gave it to us for the state of Oklahoma, but they've allowed us as a fire chief to make the decision if the other states call, then we could actually go assist the other states because we're in kind of a unique region where we're more apt to help Kansas or Texas than we are Oklahoma City. So um, here's, you can go ahead and scroll. Here's Captain Garrison going through the, the rapids, <laughs> learning how to save himself. You can go another one. Uh, Jesus Uribe, of course he's kind of a <laughs> He's a better swimmer than I am, obviously. It's um, like you're floating. My, do what? <laughs> Looks like you're floating. Well, that's funny. They said I, they said I ottered around a lot. <laughs> you go through. Uh, there's our assistant chief laser. There's fire marshal Gray going through it. Where's your kayak? Where's our? Well, we have an inflatable raft, and We're <laughs> you'll see it here in a minute. But. Uh, there's Wes getting it, but uh, we did learn complex highline systems and how to navigate with a boat and a raft. You know, we don't have a boat, and I don't see a need to have a boat. Uh, they're twelve or fifteen thousand dollars downstate. They need them, not here. A raft is going to get us anything that we need to take care of. So 
Um, they taught us a lot about raft operations. We put our raft on the water and floated down. If you've never been to that part in, in Oklahoma City, it's really awesome. You need to go try it at least once. Just don't do it without a raft. It hurts. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, one of the neat things about the class is they do night operations, and it adds a whole different level of, you know, uh, challenge to it. It's just a lot harder at night. You can't see each other. You can't hear each other. You, you're, you're doing things by whistles, and it was, it was just really interesting to do it at night. So it was, that was a great asset also. Um, is that the last one? Mm -hmm. Do what? So that's it. If you all want to hear from them, uh, these guys will be the boots on the ground uh, that will actually be doing it. So. I brought a couple of the little bit of the equipment. Um, I didn't bring you one of me to bring the whole big bag in and spread it out everywhere. So you might have to look at it if you want to show you at the council or whatever. But, um, like, like Chief was at, I think Patton said, we're very blessed on everything that we were given. Um, the equipment that we uh, they gave us was top notch. It looks like the best, best yeah. in the, that we could find. Um, so anything, any questions y'all would like to add or have or anything? You got any plans of doing a demonstration? I'm for sorry. the? Or do you have any plans doing a demonstration for the community? We we definitely can. Um, it's not it's not going to be as cool as it was down no, there. No, I'm but, sure, but, but still. we can put the raft in the water and do some highline systems and and show it off a little bit. Definitely, we can do something like that. Okay. We've talked about getting in there anyways, and you got to any of these skills. You have to do them, and Chet, you can attest. If you don't do them, you're gonna you're gonna forget them. Kind of like football, you, you'll forget your moves if you don't do it enough. So um, we'll we'll be practicing with it and setting up high lines and stuff. So okay. definitely we'll set something up. Plus, it's you know it's it's getting hot. It, it might get hot. It was cold when we went. I bet, yeah. yeah. Well, congratulations on your <laughs> completion. And yeah. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. <laughs> this is housed at the station? Yes, it's in our big technical rescue trailer. Okay. And we had a guy build us some shelves, additional shelves to house all of it, so it's all nice and contained and easily accessible. Good to go. Come on, look at Agenda item number 10 is discussion and possible action on authorizing resolution number 17-08 for the section 5339 program grant application for financial assistance for vehicle replacement and assorted equipment in support of public transportation. Mr. Harris. Okay, this is a grant that apply for each year for replacing the buses. Sometimes the percentages they pay is less than others. Uh, last year at this time we recommended y'all didn't take it at that time because the amount of money they offered was not near what we had anticipated at the front and we said we could make it uh, on the buses as well this is just for the application to get our, our hat in the ring on the money uh, at times the match is 85 15 we would only pay 15 percent on the buses so for for the uh, the smaller ones that are handicap accessible about six seventy six thousand dollars so we could get one of those for twelve to fifteen thousand dollars would be the cost, and so if the grant comes back and we get that kind of money, uh, we'd look at it and we'd probably recommend uh, taking it that time. But this is the application to get in there, and then we'll see what the money is after we look at our fleet and then uh, make recommendations, whatever's appropriate for y'all's decision. Any other questions? So when you make the application, you don't have to state what you're wishing to purchase or anything like that. You can put in the large, you know, we've got the larger buses and then we have the smaller minivan type handicap. Uh, I think what they did last year is you could put in either one or both and then you, you can always turn down the money. And that's what we did last year, the percentages. And I don't remember what happened, but it seemed like they were only gonna pay 20%. Mm -hmm. And at that point we're like, our buses are okay. We don't need to pay that cash at this time. Uh, and that, that's held true. Uh, that, in all, that won't hold true forever. <laughs> at some point we may have to do some things uh, if we wanna continue with that. But for that grant application, I think it's a good thing. Get our name in the hat. Uh, later, we'll see how it comes back, and, and we'll make recommendations, look at our fleet, see if things have changed, whatever we want to do at that point. How much time is put into this grant application? I don't think a whole lot, honestly. Uh, it's, a, it's a federal form. They send it every year. It's not like we go out. Anybody that has one, they send the paperwork to you. Uh, but I don't, it's not a... 
it's not like some grants if we go out for a big soccer complex and compete on other things. This goes to the people that are already providing services. So I can't tell you on hours, but I would say it's a few hours okay. and not a few days. Okay. So. David, 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 the grant cycle, is, is it a federal fiscal year? I mean, the grant, will the grant be awarded, say, sometime in the fall or prior to I think the grant will be awarded sometime in the fall, but I don't have that right in front of me yeah. when they do it. Um, for some reason, I was thinking it was about October last year. Uh, but sometimes there's multiple ones, and I don't know if this is the exact same one. Um, but we'll we'll get noti we'll get notified, and then we'll look at it, and then it'll come back to y'all to accept the grant or not accept the grant. If you accept the grant, then you have to put your matching part up. Uh, if if it doesn't make sense at the time, yep. then you you take a different no action, or you can kick it back to somebody else. Okay. okay. Any other questions? I have a motion. I make a motion that we authorize resolution number 1708. I'll second. Having a motion to say. Swager. Aye. Living good. Aye. Alvedras. Aye. Crone. Aye. Peterson. Aye. We have five ayes. Agenda item number 11 is discussion and possible action on approval of an agreement with respect to property taxes between Texas County, Seaboard Foods, and the City of Guyman. Mr. Petty, Mr. Petty, Mr. Petty, Mr. Mitchell, uh, Mr. Petty probably had more direct influence or <laughs> contact with us than Mr. Mitchell, so I'll turn it over to Mr. Petty. Yeah, during the uh, years past, there were some mechanical errors that occurred uh, in the courthouse so that uh, Avalorum tax money that uh, uh, Seaboard paid instead of being retained by the county on Seaboard properties was put into the TIF program, came from the treasurer through the city, and went on to apply to the bonds. So when the heirs were discovered at the courthouse, uh, they did their math and said the Seaboard actually received more benefit than uh, they should have from the program. So this agreement is for Seaboard to pay the delinquent, basically a delinquent tax, and uh, uh, they'll pay that to the county and part, part of what they paid to the county will be retained by the county, and then the rest of the payment will be treated as TIF funds as it should be. So this is just to straighten up some mathematical errors that occurred over the courthouse in past years. I'm and everybody, everybody agrees on the numbers. And Seaboard and the county have already passed, passed on it. The county says this is what you should have paid. Seaboard says, okay, we'll pay that. Thanks. It already hashed it out? Yes. It just, when I saw this, it just jumped out at me that within five days of receipt, that 890, let me see here, 891870 dollars the county shall and then cause to be paid to the city the amount of 756916 is that what you're saying are the TIF funds yeah i have the checks and when the agreement's signed tomorrow we'll, the agreement will be delivered with the check over to the treasurer and they'll deposit the check there and then pass the funds through the city and and the city will pass them on to the trustee bank so Oh, actually, we don't receive the money. It goes to the trustee bank on the TIF. Yeah, it goes, yeah, it goes to the trustee bank and it's black and Yeah, yeah, he was very happy about it until. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're simply the pass through to the yeah, we, uh, trustee bank. Yeah, because we're our name is in the agreement, so we get. To, we don't get to keep any of it. We get to touch it, but we don't get to keep it. I was very sad when I found that. <laughs> any other questions or discussion? Do I have a motion? I make a motion that we uh, approve the agreement with respect to the property taxes between Seaboard and uh, Texas County and the City of Guyman. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Alvedras? Aye. Living good? I would like to abstain, please, from this agenda item. Okay. Swager? Aye. Crone? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We have four ayes and one abstain. Agenda item number 12 is discussion and possible action on approval of payment to Garver Engineering 
the amount of $18,450.93 for the Municipal Airport Terminal Apron Project, the ongoing project at the airport. Yeah. Any questions? Discussion? Motion? David, would you be the one answering on this? This is just the ongoing project that's going on there. It's just the yes, yes. Yeah, the it's the federal uh, grant that you received, and and the council awarded the contract about three months ago, and the contractor's been on site uh, approximately 60 days, and this is the progress payment to the contractor until the in the uh, inspection services through Garver. You'll probably see two, maybe three more progress payments. Uh, they're supposed to wrap this up fairly quickly. It's a very short construction timeline. Very dependent on weather because you're doing apron work, concrete kind of work out there at the airport. So uh, maybe another 45, 60 days and they should be complete. Are we under budget, over budget, do you know? Uh, we're on budget. We haven't had any change orders that I'm aware of at this point. Any other discussion? Do have a motion? I make a motion that we approve the payment to Garber Engineering, item 11. I'll second. Have a motion and a second. Crone? Aye. Living good? Aye. Uh, Alvijas? Aye. Swager? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We have five ayes. Agenda item number 13 is discussion and possible action on approval of payment to Northern Safety in the amount of 149000 $985.28 for the purchase of SCBA equipment. Chief McFadden. This is just the, we received all the SCBAs, we have them now, and this is to pay Northern Safety for them. Is this Chief what, go ahead. No, go ahead. Is this what went out for bid? Yes. When we, yes. When we made that decision. Went out for bid, that's the, all the SCBAs finally came in from that bid, so they're all here. This is just the payment. And the what units, is. the units have been tested, and you've gone through the setup. Yes. Right. Yep. So they'll be placed on the truck within the next week. So they're great. What's their life? Fifteen Expected years. Fifteen years. At fifteen years, you have by NFPA, you have to get rid of them. And NFPA isn't a law, but if somebody comes back and gets hurt, and you haven't followed it, then that's when the lawsuits start trickling down or up. Either way. So. <laughs> Either way, it, it's good to be in compliance with NFPA. Good to go. Any other discussion? Motion? I make a motion that we approve payment to Northern Safety in the amount of $149,985.28, item 12. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. Swager? Aye. Living Good? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Crone? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We have five ayes. <clears throat> Agenda item number 14 is discussion and possible action on improvement of payment to Stryker Medical in amount of $83,974.32. Chief McFadden. This is to pay for the auto lift systems that we put in all the ambulances. This is the grant money that we received from the state. The state finally reimbursed us, and so now we can pay Stryker. So this is just getting all of that grant taken care of. We've got the check in. It's already deposited, so we just need to pay them. Any questions? Motion? I'll make the motion that we approve payment to Stryker Medical, item 13. I'd like to second. A motion and second. Swager? Aye. Crone? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Living Good? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We have five ayes. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thanks, Chief. Agenda item number 15 is discussion and possible action on approval of low quote and purchase of a new 2017 police vehicle. Chief, Mc I want to say Chief McFadden, you're due. You're through with you, Chief. No. <laughs> Tonight for tonight. What would he do with a police vehicle? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> in the budget for two, two police vehicles were budgeted by the city. Uh, we, you, you approved the purchase of one. Uh, back, I believe, in February. It's ordered. It's supposed to be here the end of this week or next week. Ford is running about 10 to 12 weeks instead of six to eight weeks like other car manufacturers. But anyway, um, we're getting the time of year where they start cutting off or start putting cutoffs on orders. And if we wait until after the 
cut off, then we wait till the next model year and the price goes up. Uh, if you approve the purchase, I've given you uh, two, two different quotes. One's off the state contract, and then the second one is from our local dealership. Um, it's up to you. On the, is there a difference in delivery dates between the state contract and the local dealer? No. Do you have a, a recommendation? <clears throat> either or you know it's one of those deals that you know I the state contract price is considerably less um, but the other place is local so there's what about nineteen hundred and fifty dollars different something like that yes roughly is nineteen hundred and something Obviously, some of the coating is different on the specs. Is there anything different on these vehicles? Basically the same. I think on the state contract vehicle, uh, they put in some, I think, some extra key fobs or something like yeah. that. But other than that, the vehicles themselves and all the other options are, are identical. There's no backlash if we were to stay local with the state contract, right? No, no. no. The, um, you purchased the council purchased the first vehicle locally. Yeah, so. locally. I guess what I was trying to get to is the nineteen hundred dollars might might be a long term savings by not having to uh, go pick it up downstate or to do any warranty work. Well, we stay local, and you know it benefits you know it benefits our community. Any questions? Any other questions? Discussion? No, I'd like to make the motion that we go with the uh, local quote. I'd like to second. Is the motion is second. Swagger? Aye. Cron? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Living Good? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We've got five ayes. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. <coughs> Agenda item number 16 is discussion and possible action on appointment of a member to fill a vacancy on the Arts and Humanities Commission. We have anybody from Arts and Humanities, or I believe the young lady's here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's what Come I like. up front. I like to see that. I know so, most of you guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah, very familiar faces. Tell us a little bit about you. Uh, I've lived in Guyman all my life. My family um, owns Sensors Liquor Store. I'm Shay Lindsay's daughter, Shay Lindsay Cryer's daughter. I have my own business. I've had my own business for about three years. Uh, Red Corn Massage, I'm located out of the code. Um, I was notified about this position from Ashley Ortiz uh, for the Arts and Humanities Board, and I'm really excited and I hope that I have the opportunity to be on this board. Um, I can answer anything. I'm pretty much a go-getter. <laughs> I have to get things done. Right. You were taking pictures earlier, I noticed that. Yeah, somebody asked me. I don't say no to a cop. <laughs> <laughs> I volunteer. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I like her enthusiasm. So, yeah. Any other questions? Do we have a motion? I like your enthusiasm. I'm going to make a motion that uh, we appoint Mrs. Redcorn, Miss Redcorn, Miss, to the mem to fill the vacancy on Arts and Humanities Commission. I'll second that. I have a motion and second. Living good. Aye. Cron? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Swager? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We have five eyes. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you, you guys. So good. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. <laughs> Agenda item number 18 will be reports, or 17, reports and comments from city manager and council members. I have a couple of items that I handed out to you. The uh, monthly fire and police activity reports that cover uh, their activities for the past month along with the uh, animal shelter picked up 83 animals this month past month I thought that was kind of a high number <laughs> um, the other letter uh, the other handout is a letter that we'll be sending out through our code enforcement office to property owners asking their assistance and help in keeping the alleys cleared because we're finding a lot of debris uh, from tree limbs and mattresses and furniture and other things in the alleys and we find it very difficult to get down the alleys to pick up our uh, 
garbage, trash, clean the uh, dumpster. So we're asking uh, people to assist and volunteer and help and keep those alleys clean. And, and uh, should we be able to find through various resources uh, individuals who are uh, habitual and, and dropping off trash in alleys, we'll try to find them and cite them. So okay. this is the friendly reminder letter that we're going to be sending out. Very well written. Very well written. Is this going in the paper? Uh, it, could, it can go in the paper, yes. We could do that. Uh, Kevin wrote the letter. He crafted the letter. He edited the letter. I don't know if anybody spell checked him, but uh, <laughs> it, it was a good letter. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> Councilman King in the past would have found something, but I haven't found anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, and then uh, the other thing is a reminder that next council meeting we will have a workshop to talk about boards and commission uh, talk about appointments filling vacancies some of the boards and commissions no longer meet some of them are advisory just a very general discussion about how the council wants to uh, handle or approach boards and commission commissions in the future and then uh, final item is I've asked David to do an introduction and David has some other information to share with you tonight before we get into that can we put this on the on the website and email blast it and on our yes certainly Facebook. certainly it'll be done tomorrow about nine o'clock awesome thank you oh <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to introduce uh, David Clapp Saddle we've talked to you all about our planner coming in and here he is uh, He's been here, started Monday, and gotten around. I don't know if y'all had a chance to meet him, but I do. Uh, if you would like to spend some time with him, give him a call up here. Uh, he can take you to lunch, talk about life, see in the afternoon, whatever. Uh, we talked about the master plan being something we would implement. Uh, here's the big picture, and here's the guy that's going to have to work on the implementation. And, and you know, we talked about that whole process. But uh, I'd like to welcome him if he has anything to say. Y'all know what he looks like now. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Good evening, uh, Dave Clapsaddle. Uh, it's just a pleasure to be here. And I just got into town on Sunday and have spent some time uh, <clears throat> driving around town, looking where I'm trying to remember where everything is and putting people and uh, putting places into context and meeting a lot of great people, both on the job and in the town and are just really, really uh, happy to be here and ready to get to work on how are we gonna implement our comprehensive plan. Uh, looking at, we know where we've been, we know where we are, how are we gonna to get to where we want to be, and I look forward to working with each and every one of you to, to achieve that. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome Thank you. to Guy. Thank you. Uh, last thing, we talked about naming the elk, and we had a council member, Sergio, he's really, just, that elk has got to have a name. So, <laughs> so we had, uh, you know, our spring clean up, and we asked for people to have any suggestions on the names. So I've got names. We'd like someone to draw it out or whatever. Sergio. I think Sergio That's his deal. That's right. So that way, that way well, he's, re so. he's responsible for start <laughs> to finish. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. <laughs> it's not it. Moose is not in here. Moose is not Good. In here. Good. <laughs> and drum roll. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and the winner is. And the elk's name is Elmer. All right. All right. <laughs> we got Elmer. <laughs> Elmer the elk. He's actually growing quite well. He's three by three right now. Probably will be five by five later and doing well. So, <laughs> Elmer. Um, Elmer. And a lot of the names we went through were people. And uh, in, in this one, I remember the person said, "I want to put down Elmer. That's my granddad's name." Oh, I so did. a lot of people put names of family and different things. We. Uh, well, hopefully they get to see that. Yeah. So anyway, that'll that'll be interesting. So, uh, could you report back when you go out there and tell him what his name is? <laughs> name is Let us know what kind of reaction he get. Well, <laughs> face to face. You know, I've, I've raised teenagers, and I can tell you what the reaction is. It's kind of like cats. You know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other reports? I that's have it. a big kudos. Oh, go ahead. No, I'm, that's it for me. I have a big kudos to city staff and Mr. Harris and his wife. They went out there during the storm 
and save the Watusi calf when his when his mom died, or when her mom died, and a big thanks to Mr. Harris and his wife. They've been out there bottle feeding this calf and bringing it back to life, and it she is healthy. She's healthy, so <laughs> congratulations. We, we didn't go out to storm and catch it. That was some of the, that was some of the parts of the street farm guys that caught it and actually took it to the dog pound where it was warm. But we, we did my wife. She's named it too, and we didn't ask permission. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a drawing for that one too. Only with that, <laughs> only with that name. Right. <laughs> okay. That, that's all I have. They did a great job. Any other doing a good job. comments, reports? I think the Pioneer weekend went off without any hitches. It seemed like it was a good weekend. I think everybody had fun. We had super weather. And uh, I think it was great for the community. And thanks to everybody for putting in the extra time and effort to get that done. John? Crown? I'm good. Well, I want to extend the same kudos on Pioneer Days, the parade, the weather was excellent, the parade was good, uh, the parade's always good, that's kind of the big, to me that's the big part of Pioneer Day. Even but, though uh, it started earlier, huh? even though it started earlier. Yeah, my wife was kind of running a little bit late, but she's late to everything, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> but in, huh? You're in trouble. <laughs> no, she knows, it's, it's no big deal. <laughs> so anyway, but also I want to, as, as everybody's aware, Several weeks ago on Sunday morning, we woke up to a spring blizzard, and it was wet, and it was blowing, and it was howling. And well, I woke up about, about a little before five, and I was, had the TV on the bedroom, and about 5:03, it went click, and the, I thought, well, the timer went off. And it was the big timer, <laughs> the big timer, and everybody went off. But anyway, I want to extend my gratitude, and I think they all deserve everybody's gratitude. Throughout the day, later in the afternoon, I started getting some phone calls from Tri-County needing some assistance from the city and I tied them up with the people they needed to. And some other things and, and uh, anyway, Tracy Bowers, all of our, all of our folks, David, all of, all of our city staff, the sanitation department guys, they started in, they were working, running manually, running lift stations, running around generators and pumps to make sure that since they didn't have electricity, we had some well problems that the wells would be pumping real slow into one tank on the south end and they had to manually run some things. Anyway, for two days, our staff, and it wasn't just the, it was everybody. The fire department was ready, the police department was out, but it just proves how exemplary a workforce and staff the city of Guyman has. Everybody worked together. There was no arguments that I know of. Everybody, what can we do to help? And it, you know, Sunday afternoon at six o'clock, it was it was melting and and gone away, except for the aftermath. So we, anyway, I want to extend my my thanks and my kudos to everybody in the city of Guyman for what they did for all our staff. Any other? Reports for committees. In, any new business? Not, we'll stand adjourned as the Guyman City Council. We'll reconvene as the Guyman Utilities Authority. We've already done <clears throat> agenda items two, three, and agenda item number four is discussion and possible action on the 2017 budget amendment number one for the GUA fund for an increase of $50,000. The, the purpose of this transfer is to set aside money in our sanitation department to pay for the cleanup. Uh, Mayor uh, just talked about the storm that you had. Um, Mayor signed the emergency declaration and, and we um, opened the transfer station to receive uh, storm debris. And the purpose of setting this transferring this money out of fund balance into the sanitation line item is so we can track those expenditures and and get a good feel for what that storm cost the city and being able to uh, have the funds available to pay out the claims. Any, any discussion? Do I have a motion? 
I make a motion that we make the 2017 budget amendment amendment number one for the GUA fund for the increase of fifty thousand dollars item four. Like to second. I have a motion and a second. Swager? Aye. Cron? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Living good? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We have five ayes. Agenda item number five is discussion and possible action to approve the claims list of customers disposing storm debris, storm debris at the landfill and approve payment. All right, this, this claims list is for the initial week. Uh, the, the declaration is for 30 days, and the claim list that you have today shows the activity at the transfer station through Friday at noon. Is that correct? Uh, Mitchell, you have anything to add there? Running some numbers on what it was. So we started Tuesday at 1 because of the power poles being down and not being act, able to access the transfer station. And then we shut down Friday at noon because of Pioneer Week. Uh, so in a total of three days, we had the 70 confirmed loads that went over the scales. Um, and the total in weight was almost 30 tons just off those 70. Now, the other passengers were bypassing because they needed to get back. They didn't partake in doing so but it was a uh, very beneficial um, and I think a lot of people have caught wind of it um, and they're starting to really jump on it again it closing down possible of June 2nd when it would be over June 2nd yes because we enacted it May 2nd okay so we'd probably do that morning and again within the resolution could extend it for 14 days that is a possibility as well the weather hasn't I guess it, it is that time of year where the snow, uh, rain, and that's kind of slowed them down a little bit, but they're doing their part. Um, we've actually had a lot of people Tuesday were asking, can I just run down the alleys and pick up limbs? And I said, get after it. <laughs> Knock yourself out. So people are doing it. Um, Good. In talking about that also, I would like to say, um, Pete was telling me a story that after the, the storm aftermath Monday, the children of North Park Elementary School, along with the teachers, went out and to the park and grabbed limbs and actually brought them to the city employees. So that was quite amazing and definitely a big kudos to them. And thank you. Uh, they just sped it up tremendously. So along with the um, Good Samaritan list, we've had two people, two different organizations now that have asked for that list. So um, hopefully they're getting on those and uh, the six people who have called in for it so our elderly folks will get theirs cleaned up how many do we have on the list do we have five or six, six. that are on that list we six. had six as of yesterday now that should grow that yeah should grow. <clears throat> so far I think this call. program is working out pretty well now that obviously the there's some kinks here this is our first event so there's some issues that we have to work through and and we dealt with one of those last week um, <laughs> Uh, a person had the impression that once they got the ticket, they could come down to City Hall and redeem it for cash. <laughs> we, we told them that really wasn't how that would work, but after, after talking to them two or three times, they decided to go back out with three more loads to the transfer station. So uh, I think it's working out. And uh, once you approve the claims list, then we will hold the checks tomorrow for those people who come in to hand pick up their check and then Monday we'll get addresses and send the remaining checks out by mail just a thought or question with the, the, the fix council may be the 25th is there any with some, any of these people would it would it be it'll be then when we can do this again yes we'll have a so, claims list for you so, on the 25th and then we would have maybe the final claims list the first meeting in June so I guess my, th my question would be to make sure the people are staying motivated and energized in the process. Would, would, it be any, would there be any benefit to have a special meeting on a, on a basis in there sometime just to speed up payments? Or do we think that's a necessity? At this time? I, I think right now, I think it, it's, it's working out. fairly well as playing out. We haven't really had, the only complaint was the one that felt okay. that they could redeem their okay. ticket for cash. but. Once, once they understood how it worked, and then we've got that issue resolved. I told them they could keep growing. Yes. <laughs> yes. They'll have a bigger check. They'll right. have a bigger check. Okay. Any other questions? Discussion? 
So this is to issue the payment for the, all these people, correct? Yes, everybody, through the first week. Mm -hmm. Through the first week, everybody that partook in this. So yes, the people that don't come and pick them up, you're going to mail it to them. Correct. And if we don't have to redo this claims list again, right? Well, there'll you, be a different one next. There'll be yes, okay. there'll be a different one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or a new one, I a should say. One. <clears throat> okay. Any other discussion? And motion. I'll make a motion that we approve resolution 1707. Second. That a motion is second. Crone. Aye. Living good. Aye. Swager. Aye. Alvedras. Aye. Peterson. Aye. We have five ayes. Agenda item number six is discussion and possible action on amending section six of resolution 17-01 regarding fees at the transfer station. Right. This is a, a request that was made by Councilman Crone uh, for the council to consider whether or not we wanted to waive the $5 fee at the transfer station for property owners. Um, and so if the council uh, is in agreement or supports the idea, then I think you could probably make the change, very minor change to the ordinance, and you could probably make that through a, uh, a floor amendment tonight, or if you want us to redraft the ordinance and bring it back to your next meeting that would be fine as well uh, we did look at how much we're collecting through that five dollar fee and it's about a thousand dollars a month uh, you know not a month thousand dollars a year so obviously we would lose that thousand dollars in revenue but maybe it would be beneficial for us to to waive that fee so that we encourage people to once again bring their mattresses and old washers and dryers out to the transfer station under a certain, uh, oh, there's still the charge. Yeah, right? you'd still, we would still have the charge over. This this proposed change would be for anything under a thousand pounds. So basically a pickup load. I don't think you can get a thousand pounds on a pickup truck. Maybe you can, but um, anyway, it would, it would just strike that uh, sentence in the ordinance having to do with the $5 fee. Plus Plus, I'd say this the audit trail for a five dollar. Yeah, there's a lot of paperwork, paperwork for five dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Larry, one, one thing to correct on the much money we've gotten, we said per year, it, it, it's only going to affect in January. Yeah. 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 So it's really only oh, only, only four months? Okay, so you're looking at about three times that much. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I have a motion and a second. Living good? Aye. Cron? Aye. Swager? Aye. Alvedras? Aye. Peterson? Aye. We have five eyes. I forgot this earlier. It was up here to the city of Guyman. And I'm going to go ahead and read it. It's an invite for each and, each, each and every one of us to attend the FFA banquet. It'll be held May 13th, 2017 at the High School Commons area at 6 o'clock. They'll begin the evening with the FFA opening ceremonies, followed by a potluck dinner and awards, immediately followed by a dance. It's at 10.30, till 10.30, so you're each invited. And it doesn't say it doesn't say if you need to bring a potluck dinner or the, a, a, the potluck dinner or not <laughs> or pot whatever you call it what type of dance? pot dish <laughs> what kind of dance what type of dance it doesn't say you can read it it's that was for information <laughs> only okay. here you go You're, <laughs> there might be an RSVP new business if not we'll stand adjourned thanks everybody for attending tonight.